What's going on guys? This video is brought to you by StoneAgeGamer.com. It's where I go for retro games, accessories, systems, plus more. Be sure to check out StoneAgeGamer.com and see for yourself. How you doing guys? This is John with GameTrade1.com and in this episode I'll be reviewing the Power Cracker Plug and Play System. I paid $14 for this. <laughs> I got it at a swamp meet, what other people call flea market as well. Um, and I think it was they were asking like $18 or $20 for it. I talked them down to $14. That's a beautiful thing about going to Swamp Meets. You can actually negotiate with them uh, and all that good stuff. But anyway, uh, this thing is kind of funny. I just wanted to do a video on it. Uh, it's obviously made in China. You can tell by some of the, the bad English. But it's a new version, uh, 2013. And unleash your uh, ultimate power. It, it's marketing. It advertises that it has 76,000 games in one, which is pretty amazing. Uh, there's two controllers, there's a gun here, which something that they don't point out is these guns won't work on um, high-def televisions. Uh, you need a standard television for these guns to work on because it uses light to bounce off. So they don't obviously say that, but uh, I know that to be the case. A bundle set includes a game console, two consoles, or a second console, toy gun, AV cables, AC adapter, manual. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbox this and take a closer look at it and I'll show you some gameplay and see what's included in this power cracker, which Love the name, by the way. <laughs> Seriously. Let's take a closer look. Okay, guys, so here is the front of the box. Uh, you got the greatest game machine in the planet. 2013, unleash your ultimate power. This is where it says 76,000 uh, games in one. You get the bundle set, game console, second game console. So we get two for the price of one. Toy gun, AV cable, AC adapter, manual. Let's look on the back. Oh, it looks like, okay, so here, this is decent. Look at these, these graphics here. This is awesome. We got some racing games. We got you know, power, start, jump. You got a nice analog stick, directional keypad. You got a fire. Oh, you got your power. Kind of looks like an Xbox 360 remote. And look at those graphics. They look freaking amazing. Gran Turismo style graphics. I mean, it's really cool. Most impressive uh, TV game machine made yet. That's the quote I was saying in the back. A new game controller, ideal for home entertainment, made in China. How am I not surprised? Let's open this up. Okay, so first off, it uh, comes with simple controllers. This is Power Blaster TV game, power start. Uh, you got your left button, right button. Okay, easy enough. How to play. Turn the power on, push the reset button. After finished playing, be sure to unplug AC adapter from the wall outlet. Do not use any power plug other than the AC adapter provided. Well, the English is decent, I guess, enough. This is your AC adapter right here. Here's your power gun. This thing's feels very, very cheap. Let's see how this thing actually looks. Get your analog, moves around your directional pad. This button doesn't do anything. It's your power. You get AV out, okay. This really looks like your left and right bumpers, buttons here. You can plug in your second remote here. So I guess that would be this one, second controller. Looks like it's your standard uh, nine pin. Adapter looks like a Sega Genesis. This is your AC adapter, so that's what it comes with. Let's plug this in and see how it looks. Okay, so I've booted on. Notice right away there's no music in the menu screen, which you hear a whole bunch of white noise. That's an AV connection. It's a pretty weak cable, pretty cheap cable, and so it causes that white noise background, unfortunately. And I can tell you right now, this is yeah, this is a, a Nintendo Entertainment System uh, multi-cart thing. And the game plays nothing like what the box shows. Here's Excite Bike, classic game. I love Excite Bike, and actually plays pretty well. Uh, you can play either with the analog stick or the D-pad. I prefer the D-pad. I'm not really sure why they throw the extra, extra X Y buttons in here. Um, to move different menus, you use the R R L R B button, the right bumper button. Uh, but I'm not sure why the extra buttons are there. So the only ones that really do anything are uh, B and A. Let's see what other games we got here. Here's WWF, and no tile screen, and yeah, so this is pretty much, I think this is muscle uh, for the NES, it's not even WWF. <laughs> so a lot of the games, I mean, it looks like there, obviously there's not 76,000 games in this, it's just a whole bunch of games that are rehashed, renamed. This is not a very good wrestling game, in my personal opinion. It's pretty, uh, pretty cheesy, one of the early games for, uh, for the NES. Head back. Hit select to go back to this menu. Let's check out uh, Tetris 2. 
What is Tetris 2? Ah, this what this is. This is Tengen Tetris. So this is uh, Atari's version of Tetris, not Nintendo's version. This is uh, Tengen Tetris. is a little bit more hard to find. Uh, the big dispute, long story, but when Tet Tetris first came out for the NES, Nintendo sued Atari, and Atari had to take all their games out. But a lot of these sold anyway, so they're not rare, but they're certainly uncommon. I actually prefer this version of Tetris over the Nintendo port, for sure. But one I like, I like about this is you can actually see two different things. You can play two-player at the same time, which is cool. And you can see, uh, you can play against a computer, which is kind of neat, too. I actually like the music better in this Tetris than the Nintendo version. What are the games we got? Check out Super Mario. Now look at the screen. Pretty cheesy. I, don't know, I bet you they came and say Super Mario Brothers uh, in the title screen, so they changed it up. And yeah, this is uh, plays just like Mario Brothers. The music and everything. Emulation is not too bad. Let's go back to the main screen here. Let's see what else we got. We got Dig Dug, Twin B, Binary Land, Island. What's Island? Never heard of this game. Nature Clan Island. I was thinking of Adventure Island at first, which is a pretty decent game. But yeah, this one. It's a little different. I don't understand the gameplay of this. Are you supposed to push these eggs off the edge of the island? And it looks like the extra button really doesn't do much. Oh, there I'm punching. And that enemy just went right through me, and that one didn't, so... Yeah, this game's kind of cheesy. <laughs> I really don't understand how to, how to play that game. You got Road Fighter and Burger Time, which is a classic arcade. Load Runner. Donkey Kong, love Donkey Kong, but wait, oh, it's Donkey Kong Jr. This is not even the original Donkey Kong, which Donkey Kong Jr. is a pretty decent game in itself, too. Good, good port for the NES. You can just uh, go up these lines, either with two of them, it's faster to go up, going down, it's just faster to go down with one. Alright, so that's good, you got Donkey Kong, you got Super Mario Brothers, so you got some good games in this thing. Speed Tank, Tennis. What's monkey? Ah, oh, look at that. Donkey Kong Jr. again. So they just tile it differently. So as you can see, as I mentioned before, all these games just rehash. Well, it's stupid. Why don't they just put like 150 games in one? That's still a lot. Why do they have to put 76,000? It's kind of false advertising, if you ask me. What's Toy Story? Circus Charlie. Oh, I remember this game. It's a pretty fun circus game. To stay on uh, the stage four, you have to stay on the horse, jump on the tramps, trampolines. Time it right. It's all about timing, and the game's really challenging, actually. What this actually reminds me of, my I had a, a multi cart for the Famicom. I had like 180 games in one, and they're pretty much the same games. <laughs> yeah, golf, which is a pretty good game. Calculate. What's Calculate? Ah, oh, look, it's Donkey Kong Junior Math. Donkey Kong Math, which is pretty fun. Pretty, actually, pretty uncommon cart to come by. You're supposed to add up all these numbers. I'm not sure why there's two. Donkey Kong Jr. though. Oh, almost died there. Yeah, this reminds me of... Uh, I think this was only on for the NES. Swell in the water and die. <laughs> Let's go back. I have... Uh, let see, there's Island Wild Gunmen. Those are just fire fighting games. There's... Speed. Love Dr. Mario. These are the 76,000 starting from back. You can see this is the same game. Pac-Man, Combat, Tekken. What's Tekken? Karateka. Oh, I remember this game. This kind of reminds me of uh, yeah, Out of This World kind of style. You run, you just, it's a karate game. You push down to get in the stance and you have to defeat this guy. That's an interesting game. Okay, moving on to some other games. I'm gonna show you. Show you a few more. Milk and nuts. Love the name of that game. It's kind of funny. Pinball. Love pinball for uh, the NES. This is an early title for the game system. The dual screens. It's a classic. You should play this game for hours growing up. Move on, on. Let's play Contour. Let's 
see what's uh, what's Contra about. It's probably Contra. Sure enough, it is Contra. So yeah, at least it has Contra. <laughs> Get my fourteen dollars worth of a good game at least. One of the best uh, shoot 'em shoot 'em ups and local co uh, co op games uh, of all time, in my personal opinion, for the NES. It's a classic. Super hard though. If you don't put the Konami code in, this game is very, very, very challenging. I'll show you one more sample of the game here. Check it out. It's Pac-Man, classic. One of my favorite arcade games for sure. It's a good port to the NES. Oh, and I died. Well, you guys can get, definitely get an idea and feel for what games are available on this plug and play. So in conclusion, how is the Power Cracker plug and play? Well, it certainly does not have 76,000 uh, games. <laughs> That's uh, certainly not the case. Uh, and the graphics on the back of the box definitely are false advertising. Uh, they're NES games and ports. I'd say it's got closer to 100 games or more. Uh, and obviously it's just the games that keep on repeating. So um, it, it is what it is. I think $14 is probably a a fair deal for it. Uh, I probably wouldn't want to spend any more than that, but it's it's a kind of an interesting system and definitely a bootleg. Well, guys, that's my review over the Power Cracker plug and play. Uh, if you guys want to stay in touch, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, I'm also on Twitch TV, among other things. I'll put links below. Also, be sure to check out my website, GameTrade1.com. Thanks for watching and happy gaming. Take care.